I welcome you to the Fellowship National Certificate for uh, Mediators in Kenya, the ongoing virtual personal development course 2021 a fellowship program that is uh, for mediators in Kenya and also has been able to attract mediators who are from out of the region. Today is on Saturday, the fourth day of September in the year 2021, our morning session at 8 a.m., which is uh, part of the fellowship mentorship and specifically the Women's Edge, a skills mentorship hour. And our topic for today is on critical thinking skills, a critical topic for fellows on the mediation pro on the on the fellowship uh, mediation program and also for mediators in general, because mediation aims at solving problems. So this is part of the foundations in conflict transformation. And in the foundations for con in conflict transformation, the focus is on wellness coaching personal, uh, uh, professional practice design coaching, and also conflict coaching. The graduation event for the fellows in this program is scheduled for November 19th and 20th during the 24 hour lead in summit. A key feature of this program that uh, the uh, fellows are going through, that is a fellowship national certificate, is that fellows are to identify a topic of interest and this topic of interest, they are to prepare to speak at the National Fellowship and speaking at the National Fellowship will be uh, give, delivering their inaugural Ignatian Lecture. The Ignatian Lecture is in honor of our first fellowship director, that is Reverend Professor uh, Peter Ignatius Tishure, who was the first uh, fellowship director for the program and he transitioned in August, 2021. So the design of the fellowship has be, uh, the lectures that the fellows will give, it has been uh, given in honor of his name and in his remembrance as a friend, a guide, and also a teacher to the mediation community in Kenya. So we move on and uh, to the national anthem so that as a prayer for our nation and also as a prayer for our nation and also at the same time as um, an opportunity for us to be able to uh, connect on and then we can be able to move to the next part of the program. So Wimbo Wataifa, the national anthem for Kenya, we will say uh, the first stanza and I will guide. E mungu nguvu yetu, ileta baraka kwetu, haki iwe ngao na mlinzi, na tukae na ondugu, amani na uhuru, raha, tupate na ustawi. Once again, I welcome you fellows and also uh, mediators. The mentorship sessions are open to fellows and also they are open to mediators as part of an extension to the mediation community in Kenya. And also we have mediators who are from other parts uh, of, of Africa. And we are delighted that we are able to share in this um, time together. As I've said, today's session is on critical thinking skills as part of the mentorship during this uh, fellowship. And the mentorship skills sessions that we have uh, include the first one that we held in the month of July, which was on media and storytelling skills the session that we have today on critical thinking skills, the session that we will is scheduled for October on advanced arbitration skills 101. And in the month of uh, November, uniquely sign language. So I welcome you fellows and please feel at home. Remember you can send in your inquiries and questions to the chat or comments as we do carry on with this exercise. I welcome our presenter today. Our presenter today is a, ment is, is a mentor, is a session mentor, and he's also a coach to the uh, fellowship. And today he's here in the capacity of as a mentor, delivering to us of, uh, the skills in critical thinking. Um, Alex Nyinge is our mentor for today. Alex Nyinge is in the area of global business and sustainability as part of his uh, work. And he has worked with uh, organizations, multinational organizations, and also he has worked with governments uh, in public policy, he has worked with civil society, and so that means that he brings in a, a, a good rounding of someone who has worked in areas that are relevant to most of the topics and also most of the areas that relate to conflicts. Alex Nyinge, how are you today? Hello, uh, morning, Wangare. Good I'm fine, morning thank you. to you. 
Yes, so Alex Ninge is our uh, facilitator for today's session. My name is Wangari Kabiru and I'm the convener at Wasiliana Hub. Wasiliana Hub is, con is, is a great community for professional mediators. We were founded on the vision of technology transforming the professional mediation practice. And truly, as we are able to have these sessions, the webinars, and also have a, fellowship, a five month fellowship program that is virtual, that is technology transforming the professional mediation practice. We also, as uh, Wasiliana Hub, connect communities, businesses, families, and nations with accessible and verified mediators. And that is key to this fellowship program because this fellowship program then enables us to be able to, have to, to, to put out to, to the market verified and accessible mediators who have gone through a very rigorous program and we can be able to vouch for them after they have completed it. So uh, to our facilitator and mentor today, Alex Ninge, that is who we have uh, for today. And we do uh, in invite you and welcome you to be, and we do invite you and uh, welcome you to please feel at home as you uh, are able to uh, take us through the other parts of the presentation. So colleagues, as uh, uh, our, our facilitator uh, settles, as our facilitator settles in, it is quite exciting when we look at the fellowship topics that fellows have been able to, um, to submit in. So as you may be, uh, as you're aware, as a fellow on the program, and for those who are not on the program and you've joined us, please feel at home, you're welcome. Um, if, when you're, if you're on the program, you're aware that we, was, we, we are doing a fellowship, we, we are adopting a fellowship topic, and with that fellowship topic, then we are to write a blog piece article, which was due in, uh, in August, and I, I take the opportunity to commend all the fellows and who have been able to submit in time. And at the same time, for those that uh, it's, it's coming through, then in addition to that, the same fellowship topic is what we'll be following through to prepare a more detailed uh, write-up, which we will be able to now go in with uh, to the, the lead-in summit that is scheduled for November. Uh, in addition to that, then as part of uh, the fellowship accountability uh, circle teams, we will also have the opportunity to be able to prepare uh, uh, two, two, pieces of, two, pieces, two pieces of articles or writings that helps to advance the, the mediation practice in Kenya. Part of what is a great opportunity for mediators is to become contributors to the knowledge by adding critical thinking skills to the, uh, the, the field of mediation in, in Kenya. And that is an area that we are really looking forward to that uh, the fellows will be able to um, add uh, great value to all, um, to all to all of us in, 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 the, in the practice of mediation. So uh, uh, our facilitator, Alex Ninge, are you, are you comfortable and settled now? You may proceed. Uh, thank you, Wangare, and uh, thank you for the very flattering introduction. I just, I just like to look at myself as an educator and a lifelong learner, but uh, it was okay. nice to, to hear the other comments. Okay. So, as, yes. Uh, so I'll, I'll, I'd like to do maybe two or three things uh, through this session. I'll try and maybe run it through as quickly as possible. And as Wangari mentioned, feel free to share the comments or questions in, in, in the chat. And for me, when I look at the topic of critical thinking and more so for mediators, I, I looked at it in three ways. First of all, I was sort of like to try and define uh, what, is, what is critical thinking, uh, just trying to get a, a contextual definition of, of critical thinking. And then the, the, second, the other thing was now to try and break it down further and also analyze critical thinking from the oh, co wow. context of other skills and then close out. Mr. And uh, I hope as part of the session, will be able to share a cup of tea as well. I know it's pretty early and it's a bit cold. Uh, so I'll hopefully be able to engage you and really hope it's going to be beneficial for you. So the first, really the first question was to ask ourselves what is critical, critical thinking? And I tried to uh, move away from the, just the dictionary definition. And I tried to gather information from various sources. And I got about 11, uh, about 11 or so uh, different uh, definitions that were there or analysis of critical thinking. And these are the, some of the ones I thought that could be of important for us to be able to deep dive slightly. I won't go too much in depth into them. And I'll just read through a number of them. 
And for example, one of them says uh, critical thinking enables thinkers proficiently need to be to better produce and assess intellectual work, as well as act more reasonably and effectively in the world affairs and personal life. So for me, I really felt it, especially the, the term of assess intellectual work, because I believe most of us in one or the other, it is a very, it's very important for us to be able to be critical thinkers, especially when you're assessing any work we are doing. The second one, which I I felt was really uh, uh, profound was improves one's capacity to think more clearly, more accurately, more precisely, more relevantly, more deeply, more broadly, and more logically. The third was as one learns to think critically, one is better able to master content content in diverse disciplines. And one thing I know about mediators especially is that you find yourself mediating situations whereby you're not necessarily a subject matter expert, but it, it's, it, if you're able to be a critical thinker, that means you'll be able to master, not become necessarily a master in it, but be able to appreciate and better be able to guide uh, the mediation process. And the other one also I found very interesting was in terms of mastery of language contributes to critical thinking. I found this to be very interesting because it means that the better we are in mastering the languages we use, uh, whether with ourselves and others or even in mediation situation means we are better, we are better able to be critical of the situation and better advice. Another one was uh, it's integral in lifelong learning and the capacity to deal effectively with the world of accelerated change. One thing we accept and what's, what the world has shown us uh, through the pandemic, I think now it's about a year and a half now, is that the world can change and it can change radically. And now it's changed totally, uh, maybe for the better, we don't know. But I believe that uh, as critical thinkers, it, it puts us in a better position to be able to thrive in this new world. And the final one is, as, as one becomes more proficient in critical thinking, one becomes a better reader, writer, speaker, and listener. So I found this to be interesting as well. Uh, the more critical thinker you are, the better you become at reading, writing, speaking, and listening. So it means it's more important for you to expose yourself to these opportunities, uh, to read more, write more, speak more, and listen more such, in such a forum. The other points I found of interesting was as a critical thinker was the whole aspect of being having self-assessment. So you really need to be honest with yourself. You need to have goals and purposes. And uh, it's the other thing about critical thinking, it manifests it, itself in all academic disciplines. It's totally cross-cutting and it really guides us in our personal and professional judgment. So I think that was just as an introduction in terms of what critical thinking is. The other point I felt would be important was that uh, a lot of times uh, we look at critical thinking and problem solving as being one and the same or synonymous, and to an extent they are. And for me, it was in terms of looking at uh, what's the relationship between critical thinking and problem solving. And this, these four points I found to be really uh, important in terms of us understanding that. So one, th the one thing is that critical thinking does require, sorry, problem solving does require critical thinking because it will make no sense to be an uncritical problem solver, not to think that uncritical thinking is effective in the solution of a problem. So the two of them are really critical. Uh, so problem solving really rides on us. You're a better problem solver if you're a critical thinker. The second one is that uh, well-conceived critical thinking invariably contributes to the solution of problems. So in the, it's, it's sort of this is almost an inverse of the first point. So the better you're able to conceive and, and think about things critically, the better you are at solving problems. The third is that uh, that all points in the previous slide, uh, this is this particular slide, uh, the one that was defining critical thinking can be made with minor adjustments for problem solving. So we find that the, the two of them are fairly, they interrelate a lot. So they borrow off each other and uh, they, they grow off each other. And fourthly, problem solving is a major use of critical thinking and critical thinking is a major tool in problem solving. So we find that the two, so you need to be a really good problem solver and you need to be a very cr good critical thinker and the two of them uh, go hand in hand. In, in this point, I wanted to deviate a little bit and uh, just to look at critical thinking uh, from the context and uh, from the context of other skills. So you bear with me. So I'm just, I'm taking the call from home. So you'll hear all sorts of noises. I'm actually just outside my house. So I think, they, so you'll hear all sorts of noises. Don't mind if you find pets joining the call. 
uh, maybe some kids crying and even some cows at some point. So we just bear with that, but we'll try to be as efficient as possible. So the, on critical thinking, and for this, the reason why, and I also share a bit more about my background. So my, uh, uh, I have uh, a large part of my career and experience has been around what you call ICT for E or ICT for education. And uh, some years back, uh, I participated in panel and sessions whereby we are looking at uh, what's the impact of education, uh, sorry, technology uh, into the future of work. And part of it was in terms of looking at what are the kind of skill sets that would be for the future. And at the time, this was about 10 years back, 10, 12 years back, it seemed like uh, we were talking about skill sets that would be required in the next 30 years or so. But I think uh, what has happened, especially with the pandemic, is that uh, the future has shrunk. Uh, at least that's how I look at it. Uh, the 30 or 20 years we are looking at were brought down to barely a few weeks, because now one of the realities that came was, for example, for teachers, and educators, uh, lecturers, and others, uh, was that the fact that schooling is no longer what it was before, at least at the initially. We were no longer having the physical schools, by and large, we had to do a lot of schools online. For me, even for example, for one of my recent uh, courses I did, I did it uh, partly online. Uh, for the kids at home as well, it was the same thing. So one of the attributes that happened is that now uh, we started looking into what we call the 21st century skills. Uh, what are those skills that are being are required at the workplace and are really influenced by the advances in technology? So this is especially this slide essentially in most cases this is what people call the 21st century skills, and you find that uh, in this case categorize them into three. Uh, learning skills, literacy skills, and life skills. And the reason why I brought this is because, as we saw with problem solving, critical thinking skills is not a standalone skill, but it really thrives of other skills. So it doesn't mean that you just need to become an expert critical thinker and forget the other skills. So you need to be able to build on your other skills. You need to think about your creativity. How do you collaborate with the other? What's your sort of communication skills, spoken and written communication skills? Same thing, your literary skills. How do you source information? Uh, what, what kind of media influence you? What kind of technology are you using? Like now, for example, you're using the Zoom platform for this particular call. And also looking at other life skills. And some of these uh, four, five uh, life skills are very critical, being flexible. Uh, now we know things change and uh, change very fast. Something can happen and we have to change the way we do things in terms of your leadership or how do you react to leadership to leaders around you? How much initiative do you have as a person at your workplace and other areas? How productive are you? And productivity is very crucial because now uh, a lot of times you're measured in terms of our output. Yeah, it's not so much about how much time have we spent doing this or that, but it's really measured in terms of what's, what are you delivering? And also our social skills, not just uh, social skills in terms of how you interact with one or one-on-one, -on -one, but also how we, inter we interact uh, using digital channels or using the internet. Uh, the other thing I felt to be important, especially now as we work in terms of our proficiency around uh, building a critical thinking was to think of a, of a process. And I went out trying to find different examples and I found this to be a very good process, especially for somebody who wants to think about it in a cycle. Uh, one thing I want to clarify and mention here is that uh, it's not, it's not a linear process. It's sort of like not, not in a straight line or in a circle as I've, I've indicated, but it really does help us uh, to really think through uh, when, you, when you come across a situation. Uh, maybe you're mediating uh, a conflict between a couple. Yeah. So how do you go about in terms of going through the, the, the process? And this can really help you because as a starting point, you really need to analyze and understand the situation. And then from there, make some inferences in terms of what is, for example, couple A telling you, what is couple B telling you, and how can you be able to analyze that situation and better understand it? And once you've made some inferences, then you're able to evaluate the situation and really try and understand uh, the situation. And then from there, you're able to make some interpretations because now you are more informed, so you can be able to uh, uh, be able to make some sound interpretation. And then from there, you're able to generate and start thinking about what are the possible ways of 
being able to go through this situation and be able to come out with a better outcome. And then from there, you're able to reason through and be able to see, yes, are we on the right path or not? So and then the other thing to note is that this can, we can, for example, maybe have gone as far as interpretation of the situation, but then maybe new information comes in. It might mean you need to go back a few steps, maybe go all the way to the beginning, yeah? So the thing is to be cognizant of the fact that it's not a linear process and you should be having the back and forth or even cutting across uh, this particular process. The other thing as well was is important to think about when you think about critical thinking is that it has several elements. And as, you, if you, as, we, as I go through this, think back in terms of the process I've just talked about, and you'll find that a lot of these uh, elements really guide you in the process. So for example, in terms of observation, because a lot of times when somebody's talking to you, it's not just maybe what they're telling you, but probably how they tell it to you. Or even in terms of if there are two people talking, uh, the example I gave of the couple, when one is talking and maybe they're looking at the other person when they talk about certain things, there's certain things that you can observe and be able to make some kind of uh, interpretation. And then also being a critical thinker comes with a lot of experimentation. So there's a lot of learning you do. Uh, it's, you, you get better and better over time, but there, there's always the aspect of experimentation. There's, there's an aspect of taking chance. And also you require a lot of consultation. None of us is, uh, is the, is, is the is a is a overall guru on anything so we need to consult at times we find situations whereby maybe i need to talk to a colleague i need to talk to another mediator and just get an idea and a lot of times you have to make judgments you have to make some decisions in terms of yes how do we go about this because we find there's always multiple ways of doing anything and also it's important for us, yes, the feeling, the inferring, and also drawing on stored knowledge because we come into any situation with a lot of prior knowledge and experience. Same thing, when you come into a session like this as critical thinking, I'm sure all, all of us have certain thinking in terms of what is critical thinking, or some of us have probably done sessions like this before, or we're experts around this area. So we draw a lot from the knowledge that you already have. And then also to be a good critical thinker, there's certain skills and attitude that are, that are important. Yeah, so it's important for you to be self-confident, you need to be open-minded, you need to be always seeking the truth, you need to be attentive, you need to be a problem solver, you need to be good at decision making, you need to have uh, metacognition, so you really need to understand yourself, and you need to be skeptic. So in terms of whatever information is shared with you, you always have to take it a slight pinch of salt until maybe sufficient clarity is there for you to really be able to understand and appreciate. And here, I, I built this after after pre after preparing this slide on critical thinking. I felt that uh, it would be helpful to guide further uh, anybody who wants to be really good at critical thinking, and that's why I felt that a set of questions can be helpful to to guide you in terms of when you're when you're trying to uh, when you're trying to analyze a situation. So, in terms of some of the questions as a critical thinker, you can ask is one is what's happening. Yeah, so it is simply in terms of gathering the basic information. So you just come into a situation and you want to understand. So you just want to have, go in and ask, have an open mind. So the whole idea about this is just go in with a really open mind. And the best way to go this is to understand what's happening. Have a set of questions that guide you. And also try to understand why is this particular situation is important. Yeah. So this is sometimes whereby you almost put yourself, uh, put yourself out. Uh, don't think a lot in from your particular context. Try to understand the people and the situation they're raising. Sometimes it might seem trivial, or it might seem obvious for you the solution, but try to understand from their perspective. Yeah. And understand why it's so significant for them. Because somebody can come with an issue with you, and you're thinking they're blowing it out of proportion, but you need to sit back and ask yourself, why is it so significant for them? And then the third thing is also ask yourself, what is it that I'm not seeing? Yeah. Is there something that is important that I might be missing or we are missing? Uh, so just try to go further to ask yourself, what is it that I can't see? Yeah. What is it that we are not seeing? And then the next question is ask yourself, how do you know? Or Ask yourself, the information you're getting or the information you're gathered, where is the information coming from? Where was it constructed from? Maybe what biases does this person have uh, in terms of the information? Same thing, when you're reading any, or let's say you're doing a research, you need to prepare a paper. You have to ask yourself a number of critical questions because most of the time we rely on the internet to get information, but you need to 
ask yourself a bit deeper. Yeah, is it just sufficient for me to quote Wikipedia? Yeah, or should I go a bit deeper to look at more academic writings that uh, analyze the situation? And then the next point related to what I just said is who is saying it? Yeah. What is the position of the speaker and what level of influence does this person have? Because now, yes, as you're quoting, uh, is that a credible source? Is that person maybe either an expert or recognized as being a knowledgeable in that particular area? Or how has that person presented that particular information uh, to you? And another question to ask is, what else, what if, yeah? In terms of what other ideas exist and are there other possibilities? So I think the whole idea about a critical thinker is that you're very open all the time in terms of your thinking. Yes, you have to, at some point, as you said, some of, some of the critical skills is decision making, but you really have to be open all the time. And that's the time also when you go back to the process we are talking about whereby be open to going steps back. I know sometimes it's very frustrating whereby you're trying to resolve an issue, but then you feel like you're almost there, but then there's something holding you back. You need to be open in terms of moving steps back, start again, and uh, that enables you to be better as a critical thinker and also as a mediator. So I wanted to, a couple of things, uh, exercises I wanted us to do, yeah? This one, I found it interesting. I think it's, it's, it's probably an exercise I'm sure uh, very young kids could enjoy, but I believe we are a group here we can actually be able to enjoy. So I, I found this exercise and I thought it would be interesting for us to, uh, to think about. I don't know how many of us believe in aliens here. Maybe you can see in, 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 any, any comments on the group if any, any of us believes in aliens. I think for me, to, to a small extent, I believe aliens might exist. Yeah, I don't know whether I believe aliens exist or not, but uh, I wouldn't be too surprised. But anyway, so the, 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 the scenario I have is that uh, I just want you to, to think uh, back just by yourself where you are, uh, the first part. I'll ask you to, to key in some of the responses, but I want you to think about this, this situation, the exercise. Pretend that you've been assigned the task of conducting a tour for aliens who are visiting Earth and observing human life, yes? So we have some aliens who've landed and they've been given the great honor, yeah? Take them around the earth and help them observe human life. So second part, yeah? Let's just think of ourselves as kids. Maybe I'm using this scenario because I have young kids, yeah? And they'll relate with this. Uh, so you're riding on a floating carpet and you float over a professional football stadium. So what teams do you think are playing? Yeah, any football fans here? Yeah, anybody? What's, what teams are you for supporting? I know a lot of people watch the English, English Premier League and it started not too long ago. And there's been some interesting happenings. Any Arsenal fans? Yeah, any, <laughs> yeah. Any Manu fans? Ah, Manu, yeah, yeah. Ronaldo. <laughs> yeah, so I can see. All right, okay. So yes, so picture we are, we are watching a football, uh, football, we are floating over a football, professional football stadium. Yeah, we can assume it's Manchester playing, maybe and Arsenal. And then one of the aliens looks down and becomes very confused. So you tell him there's a game going on. Yeah, so it's a new experience for the aliens. We are assuming they don't see what we see, what's happening on Earth from outer space. So now what I want you to do is key, key for me these answers. So the first question, you are, so the first thing is you're answering to the alien. What is a game? Yeah, so let's see some, some responses on the chat. Yeah, so this is to an alien. What is a game? Yeah, feel free to throw in some comments on the chat. The second one is, why are there no female players? Yeah, so we use the example of uh, Manchester Arsenal just for that particular bias. Yeah, so I can see somebody say your game is competition between various teams. That's good. Yeah, so why why is it? Yeah, we are play. We why are there no why are there are no female players. Yeah, so a game is a way to win. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. So football is mostly male dominated. Yes. The third question, why do people get so passionate 
Yeah, I think this is now whereby this third question is where I want to, I want to people to be really critical. Yeah, okay, I see an interesting response. Females are at a Zoom class, yeah? Okay, when the boys are playing. Okay, uh, the, this one, the third one, I really want to, you to think about it critically. Why do people get so passionate watching other people play games? Just think about it from a perspective of an alien asking this question, because you can understand there's a stadium full of 60,000, 100,000 people, yeah? And there's only 20, 22 players on the field, but the people on the, on the stands, they're crazy about the game. They really seem to be so passionate. Yeah. So it's only 22 players, but then the, the stands seem to be where the passion is. So why? Why? Just try to think about it critically in a way that you can answer an alien so that the alien will actually understand and appreciate why. Why this madness? Yeah. So it's adrenaline, competition excites people. Okay, good. Yeah. Any other? Yeah, everybody wants to see will win. Yeah, the thrill, satisfaction, the, the adrenaline, satisfaction. Yeah, oldest game, good, good, good response. Football, yes. Passion. Oh, those are fantastic responses. Yeah. All right. Yes. So I think the whole idea about this exercise was that because you're putting ourselves in a situation well, which is likely not to happen, yeah? Uh, but then we don't, as critical thinkers, we don't put anything outside our possibilities. Anything is possible, yeah? So that's why I use that example. The next example uh, I want to use, not really an exercise, but I wanted us to, to look at three, you know, we have somebody in our background. Uh, so, the other one, uh, not so much of an exercise, but wanted us to, to define three terms, yeah? So this one, I just speak the definitions uh, because I felt we need to look at uh, analytical, what is analytical thinking, what is critical, critical thinking, and what is creative thinking. And for this, I'll just read through uh, what, 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 I, what I got. So analytical thinking is the act of breaking down complex pieces of information into smaller and more understandable components or principles. So a lot of times when you think about, about analytical thinking is what you think about the kind of things people like engineers do, yeah? Designers, uh, they take, try to take very complex things and break them down into smaller and more understandable component. It involves systematically dismantling data to decipher facts which can be used to build upon information or provide evidence-based conclusions. So this one, you're really looking at the last point, evidence-based conclusions. So analytical thinking, it has its place. And critical thinking, what you're focusing on today is carefully weighing information or views and interpreting them to make sound independent judgments, yeah? So we're really looking in terms of making sound independent judgments. It's also cyclical, as you mentioned before, meaning one can go around and around considering facts to form an opinion, cultivate a conviction, or just determine whether something is valid or makes sense, yeah? So we can see the distinction between analytical thinking. So analytical thinking to an extent might be linear or not, but then when you come to the whole idea about the, the critical thinking, it's quite cyclical in its approach. And then there's creative thinking, and a lot of times when we talk about creative thinking, uh, many of us confuse it with creativity, but I'll leave this for you. But for me, a lot of creativity and creative, uh, creative thinking, there is quite a, some distinction. So creative thinking is the mental process of bringing something new into existence through imagination. Yeah. So this is something probably that has not existed before. And we are bringing, we, are, we have used the imagination to bring it to existence. It involves the input of facts and sensory stimuli as well as its interpolation and critical reflection to imagine something that does not exist, yeah? So I think I felt those are important to think about. So I think part of it is in terms of the knowledge. For us to be better critical thinkers, we need to be as knowledgeable as possible, be able to understand and be able to interpret these concepts. So this is a part whereby I felt that we could serve some tea yeah, I know it's become different these days with Zoom. Ideally, we should be having some, we should be sharing a cup of tea. So I wanted us to better understand these concepts uh, by using the idea of tea, which is what ideally we should be having at this time. So for example, if you are, if you are when if it's analytical thinking and you're thinking about, let's say tea, this is whereby we will identify the exact ingredients 
proportions and process involved in the recipe for making the perfect tea you like. Yeah, so I don't know how you like your tea. Like for me, I just like my tea simple with a tea bag. That's it. Yeah, hot water tea bag, and that's my tea. Yeah, I don't know for you how you like it. I know that people who like put water, maybe let it boil, put some tea bags. Uh, no, no, no tea leaves. Let them boil. Add some milk. Let it boil. Yeah. So other people prefer their tea that way. But then in that's in terms of when it comes to an liquid, it's just identifying the ingredients. So you say, like for my example, it's just water and tea, yeah, and something to heat it up. For somebody else, it could be tea, I mean water, tea leaves, uh, could be milk, sugar. Those are just the ingredients. That's what we need. Yeah. So we've identified that. So we've really analyzed uh, what our tea looks like. Now, if you are to look at it from a critical thinking perspective, it's a question of what makes it a perfect tea. Yeah. Because not the other details. Uh, what, is, what is the temperature you like for the water to be at? Do you like it hot? Do you like it lukewarm? Do you want your tea bag to stay in the cup until you finish taking the tea? So there's all those different criteria in terms of we have to look at it a lot more critically. And then now, if you are to think about tea, from a, making tea from a creative thinker perspective, because you're almost coming up with a new way of doing it. Yeah. What would be, I don't know, maybe some, you can also give me some ideas of new ways of making tea. Uh, in the chat, one of the things I will think of in terms of a, of a new way of making tea would be, I don't know, I'm trying to think maybe make the tea bag be kind of like a sugar cube, yeah, or mix a sugar cube, uh, what you normally have like a sugar cube with some tea in such a way that when I drop it into the cup, it just gives me everything at, at once. So you will find that that's the whole concept about in terms of how the creative, the, the, the creative, a creative person will actually think about it. So I'm like almost thinking about it from out of box uh, thinking. And I think that's that was it uh, from me. I really just wanted to make you get more interested in the whole concept of being a critical thinker, not really, uh, and because the whole idea about critical thinking is it's a process, yeah. It's and it varies from from situation to situation, but it's principally in terms of you being open to starting from somewhere uh, towards approaching a resolution of an issue, being open to coming back again to analyze it further. And I really wish you all the best in terms of uh, as a mediator or as an educator, academician, or whichever field you are in, in terms of being able to leverage on critical thinking processes and skills to better deliver on the work you do. So thank you so much. And uh, that's my email address if you wish to reach out to me. Thank you so much. I may be back to you, Angare. Uh, thank you very much, uh, yeah, Alex. I, I, I believe that uh, that has been a very good dosage for for us, and uh, uh, thank you for for spending uh, that that time with uh, with us uh, on um, on sharing with us on critical thinking. Uh, going back again, today is uh, the Saturday, September fourth, and uh, this is our second mentorship uh, skill session, which is part of the Women's Edge a mentorship skills uh, hour. Uh, for uh, mediators who are part of the five months fellowship national certificate. Uh, and this is uh, in this particular series of the certificate, it's a virtual personal development course for mediators in Kenya in the year 2021. And uh, we have four mentorship sessions. The first session for mentorship, which was hosted in July, was on media, uh, media advocacy and storytelling skills. The second session, which is being hosted in the, um, um, uh, uh, sorry, the first session was hosted in the month of August. The second session, which is being hosted in the month of September is on critical thinking skills. The third session, which will be hosted in the month of October will be on advanced arbitration skills 101. And uh, the, the uh, final session, which is the fourth session, which uh, will be hosted in the month of and uh, no November will be on sign language. So our session today on critical thinking skills is with our, our session mentor, Alex Ninge, who is also a coach on the program as part of the foundations in conflict transformation. So Alex, thank you very much for that uh, particular, very deep uh, coverage of critical thinking. And uh, one of the advanced questions that we, we, we have is uh, on, is everyone a critical thinker? And I think really tied to that also, as you respond to that advanced question, is the question uh, or, uh, or a contribution with regard to how can one become or improve on their critical thinking skills? 
Yes, welcome, Alex. Uh, thanks. Thank you for that question. And on the first question is that, yes, everyone is a critical thinker. And the crucial part is now the second question in terms of how can one improve on their critical thinking? I think that's where the, the honor sits with all of us. Because yes, we're all critical thinkers one or the other. But the thing is that uh, what steps are we taking to keep improving and be more deliberate? So for me, it's those two parts, and especially the second one. How are you, because initially, uh, it really helps a lot when you're a lot more deliberate. And that's where the question about, for example, looking at a process, yeah? It could be the process I shared. Uh, it could be the process I shared in terms of you can use for critical thinking, but you can also look at other, there's other models as well that could be of interest. So it's for you to identify in terms of a process that works for you and really work with it until you find almost something to say a custom, a customized process, uh, because I guess same thing with critical thinking, it's not one size fits all. It's for us to really experiment and fight, find what works for us. These, these kind of models really guide us because they give us a general guide uh, in terms of what it is, but it's for us to test it out and get better. So I think the thing is, yes, uh, anybody can be a critical thinker and the catch is it's work in progress and you need to keep working on it and building on it uh, to get better and better at it. Yes. Okay. Yes, uh, yeah, thank, thank you, thank you very much. And uh, the, the next part is, uh, could be extracted from uh, what you have uh, talked about. And I believe it even speaks into the, uh, the part of being able to improve. And now this is very specifically now to the mediators and fellows. Um, you have uh, highlighted that uh, there are the three R's, reading, a reader, a writer, a speaker and a listener. Uh, and uh, as part of the fellowship program, the, uh, the outcome of this fellowship program is um, to have mediators as speakers uh, because we are building on towards the November lead in summit. And it is truly a process and it's a process of dedication because mediators require to write out topics and be able to do their own research. But most of all, um, the challenge is to come up with your own philosophy or your own theory on a subject matter. So could you probably um, just highlight to us what's the relevance or the benefit of um, having mediators uh, for in the profession of mediation, the current ones who are in the fellowship or others being able to develop themselves as readers, writers, and also as speakers. Thank you, Alex. So I think I think for this and even one of the reasons why I brought up the whole idea about uh, the what you're calling now the three R's you've actually given them some connotation now, <laughs> yeah, is that uh, one thing that when I, when I look at mediation it's you're a, you're you're more of what I'll say a practitioner and being a practitioner you get better with practice. It's it's not one of those fields whereby let's say uh, like if if you when you're a child and you learned how to cycle it stays with you for the rest of your life. You might falter if you come back to cycling after 10 or 20 years, but in, in, in a few minutes, you're going to pick it up. Uh, being a mediator, it's really, it's almost like something you need to be practicing on a daily basis. Yeah, I know we don't have that those opportunity to mediate on a daily basis, but it's something that you get better the more you do it. And that's why, uh, for example, looking at opportunities that will help you thrive. Let's say like getting a chance to be in a session like this uh, and participate in these talks, this series of uh, talks that are happening. You just coming in and think and listening. You probably just pick one one thing from this one hour session, but that's 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 a lot. Yeah, if you picked at least one thing from this, or it maybe created some curiosity in you and saying, no, actually I need to go and read a bit more about this critical thinking thing. That's a plus. It will make you better at uh, at being a mediator and make better at being a person uh, in general. Same thing. Take some time and try to write. Uh, writing can be as simple as making a presentation, like uh, slides like this. I know they write. It, yes, it because now one of the things you find is as much as you're making about five seven slides. There's a lot of reading you have to do. Uh, there's a lot of study. You don't sit down and just regurgitate this information, but you have to do a lot of reading and studying. And it and the, and the process you find you pick a few a new a, a number of new insights. And same thing. Also look for opportunities for you to speak, uh, whether it's forums like this. And they're becoming more and more opportunities now because now we are doing a lot of things virtually. So there's a lot more of these opportunities, and you can speak to audiences all the way across 
the globe. Uh, look for opportunities such as this to be able to give a talk. Uh, because one of the things, one of the things I like, and for me, why I said I, I am an, I'm, I am, I'm an educator and a lifelong learner is that I find that I learn a lot more when I teach. Yeah, when because one of the things for you to be able to teach on anything, you need to understand it. Yeah, to to an extent, so it really helps you a lot. And same thing with listening; it's really powerful in terms of being able to like, especially now because there's all sorts of sessions happening online. Let me call them Zoom sessions happening across the globe, and you have a chance to attend amazing sessions that at, at no cost that are happening, and really you 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 create a lot of learning. So I think for me, it's uh, as a mediator. The thing is that uh, you could be mediating in a field that you have no knowledge at all about. But the thing is that uh, we do, all this knowledge exists, yeah? And then as a mediator, we're not asking you to be an expert in every single field, but we're just making you to be able to understand and appreciate. And if, for example, if you go through the process, as I shared, the critical thinking process, it's a lot on the, on the questions. Uh, it's a lot about you being able to know how to ask the right set of questions and you're able to guide and participate on almost any kind of process that you might be participating in. Yes, thank you. Yes, uh, yeah, thank you very much. Thank you very much, Alex, for your for your comments or for your insights and uh, your your contributions on this. So just to uh, uh, give you give give again a background. Uh, so as for for the fellowship program, a key element of the fellowship program is that uh, we are building as mediators to become uh, mediators as speakers towards the. November lead in summit. November is our Women in Mediation uh, Mediation Leadership Month, and uh, we we've always hosted uh, uh, a day where we dedicated for the development of women in mediation, and that is has been part of the drive the, the drivers towards the development of this uh, fellowship program. And so these are fitted in very very well. And uh, also on this particular program, we also have great women, and we also have great men who are participating in the program, and that is the journey that we are on. So as part of being a, a, a fellow on the, on, on the, on the program, uh, then uh, the mediators are, have topics which they are working on. And these particular topics, then the, the goal is that you, you, you develop that particular topic. And the challenge that we do have on ourselves is that, can we have it as a new, good and clear idea? I believe that is, just the grounding of critical thinking, new, good, and clear idea. We, we call it an NGC idea. And why do we call it an NGC idea, new, new or a requirement for a new, good, and clear idea? Normally, it's said that anything in the world, you can find someone, someone else somewhere has done something on it. But there is an, an angle or a way you will approach it, and that is unique to you. So we have fellows who are exploring uh, the, the fellowship and uh, they, each of them have their own topic. And uh, uh, on the chat, we will be able to share just a number of the topics that have been presented by fellows who have done their uh, blog piece articles. And we would just like to get your insight when you look at that particular topic, you know, wh how, what, what, what thoughts would come to you? Um, and now when you wear the cape of a critical thinker, because one topic, give it to five people, they could actually give 50 different approaches. And we say this because for the, um, for, 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 for the fellows on the program, um, even um, as you look at a, a topic, for example, uh, mediation in the workplace, it can have very many angles and especially angles that make sense and are relevant to us. Um, the top line uh, angle of mediation in the workplace could be mediation disputes uh, between uh, employees. But, if I'm a critical thinker, what further exploration can I have in that? Could I say like, for example, yes, mediation in the workplace, mediation disputes uh, between employees over use of the lunch table or lunch counter. And then now how would I think about it much further so that we can really explore um, sub themes. And so um, uh, if we may, uh, yeah, and, and thank you for, uh, the, 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 for, for, the, for the earlier comments. Uh, yes, uh, for our facilitator of today, Alex Minge, you may kindly just um, in the chat, we have several topics. You may kindly just help us to just uh, bounce on what they could look like. So we have um, a fel uh, one of the fellows, uh, Magdalene Nwele, and her topic is mediation as a determinant of implementation of readmission policy 
of girls after teenage pregnancy in public schools in Makwendi County. You will notice that the topics, the aim is that they are as localized as possible because we are speaking to our, 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 our nation Kenya now when we now broadcast mm -hmm. and also getting the world to understand us. So her preamble is that when teen teenage uh, mothers when a teenage mother has to choose between going back to secondary school, leaving home with her parents, or building her new family, mediation becomes her hope uh, to reintegration. As a critical thinker, how would you explore such a topic? Probably you can give us maybe like even two sub themes that come on that as you also share others. Mm. Thank you. All right. Uh, thanks. Thanks, Ongare. And thanks for bringing this up because when, when you talk about critical thinking, it's really about solving or approaches towards solving real life situations or real life problems. That's why even before I mentioned critical thinking and problem solving being working very hand in hand, they could be different, but they work uh, hand in hand. So when it comes to a situation such as this, uh, looking in terms of mediation, mediating this issue on uh, maybe the re-entry, uh, either the re-entry process into school uh, for such a girl or girls would be uh, dropped out of school because of teenage pregnancy. It's of course, it's a very complex situation. And I think that's where mediation really comes in because mediation is not, an, it's not a question of either A or B, yeah? Because now if it was a typical example be saying, it's a question of does the girl go back to school or should she stay at home, maybe take care of the kid or find a way, yes, or find a way to take care of the kid. But really we are looking at a situation by almost want to say a win-win situation, yeah? There is, there is, yes, there is certain situations that have happened and we can't take away the fact that she's now a mother and she has uh, motherly duties, but also we have to think about, she has maybe responsibilities as being either a learner or for, for her future, for herself and her, her, ch her child or her children. So in this case, in terms of the approach or look at it is be able to step back a bit further as a critical thinker and try to really go deeper and analyze the situation and try and understand it from the context of the girl uh, as a start. Uh, what is it? what happened and how she how did she get where she is uh, also look in terms of what is her aspirations in life before this happened and now and try just to infer and, and really really understand deeply uh, what the situation is so i think because sometimes what you need to do is really take more time at this point to really understand the situation same thing understanding from a family perspective her dad her mother her other siblings and just within the community try to understand the situation so what it means that you have to work extra hard uh, at this particular time same thing try to understand in terms of uh, what what are some of the limitations she's facing maybe for example are schools open to taking girls who are teenage mothers uh, or who are pregnant uh, what are some of the barriers what are some of the laws or rules that exist maybe with the ministry of education and what is the uh, what is the what is the experience the girl is is having or likely to have based on the community she is in? She ostracized. Yeah, she's being looked at as an outcast. Yeah, and so, so I think for me as a critical thinker, the the, the first, some of the first steps to really to be able to understand, uh, really really deeply understand the situation and be able to look at in terms of the different <laughs> audiences. So look at who are the different stakeholders or audiences you need to work with and understand it from their particular perspective. Because for you, the value you're bringing here is that uh, you're going to bring, you're going to sort of like join in the dots. Yeah. Once you've been able to uh, engage with the different stakeholders or participants in this case, then you're able to infer and guide uh, in terms of the direction it's going. So you're not supposed to give the solution, but you're supposed to sort of like give some guidance and directions towards what is going to be done. So I think that will be the, the, the first step to, uh, to take. The second thing as well, we'll now be able to, to look at uh, what are the opportunities that are there uh, for, for the girl based on the scenarios that you've shared, uh, the, the scenarios that have, uh, have, been, have been shared. And now from there, be able to look at, uh, be able to look at what is a sort of like, let me say the cost benefit analysis, because now there's, there's the option of the girl stay at home, take, their take care of the child. Sounds like the easy way, easy way, easy way out. But then what is it that is going to be lost out by virtue of the girl staying, staying at home and just taking care of the girl? Is it going to be a vicious cycle? Yeah, maybe the mother went through the same experience. There's other girls going through the experience. So what's the other option? Is she, how do you balance out maybe her going back to school with her taking care of her maternal responsibilities? So it's in terms of seeing what's the kind of balance. So I think for, for you as the mediator is looking in terms of how do you infer. But then the other important thing now, I'll say the output of this as a critical thinker will be to bring a new way 
of thinking or a new way of doing things. So I can't give you an answer to this, yeah, uh, a specific answer to this. But as an as as a as a, as a as a critical thinker who's a mediator, the end goal for it is come up with almost almost I want to say an out of box thinking, yeah, almost like a new idea. The creativity aspect of it also comes in because now you've been able to analyze the situation very critically and able to create potential alternatives that never existed yeah or let me say never existed in quotes because almost at times it says nothing new in this world uh so it, but the thing is just to think about it you should have added value in such a way that for this girl her life will be totally different by virtue of you being the mediator in this particular process i hope i've answered the question well uh, yes, uh, thank you. Thank you so much. And uh, so we have a couple more that um, um, have been uh, uh, dropped in in the chat. And these are now uh, for the, the colleagues who have been able to who have sent in their blog and the blogs were 500 word article. Uh, okay. So that just to give to and, and, and because we are moving into the as I mentioned into the November lead in summit where uh, you'll have a 1,200 word article, and also you'll also have your 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 speaking your speaking your speaking notes, and also your speaking presentation. Just as we've uh, been able to have like a session with yourself. So if I, if I may run through um, the the next one, and uh, for for these others, we'll just have a, a quick mention from you on a, just uh, maybe a, a line or two of how they can the 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 the, the person working on it can use critical thinking in it, so that we are adding new new knowledge and also in a new way. Um, and, and for this then, uh, for the other colleagues, as we look at other at the, at, at topics from other fellows, uh, from other fellows, please use that to also explore the one that you're working on um, um, yourself. So we have Joyce Kimori, uh, Child Custody and Co-Parenting in Mediation. I'm passionate about mediation and particular, uh, particularly children affairs in the area of custody and co-parenting. 99% of all the cases I've handled in, ch in children affairs have reached a settlement or an agreement. So how can she uh, adopt critical thinking in this, in her speaking and, and in, in her philosophy? Because we now would want to now uh, expect from Joyce Kingori to have a philosophy around child custody and co-parenting in mediation. Uh, we normally say it, Einstein is a person and they came up with a theory we now call Einstein theory. So how can Joyce Kingori adopt critical thinking so that we can now have the Joyce Kingori uh, theory on child custody and co-parenting mediation. As you, if you can have your, com, your your quick comment on that and then also look at the, the, a couple of the others. Thank you. All right, so thank you. Thank you for that. So I think the, the, the whole concept about critical thinking, it's, it's fairly uh, similar, uh, cutting across. Of course, situations vary. Uh, the person who is managing the situation is probably best to, to guide. And I think for me, I still want to go back to a lot into the whole aspect of the two things in terms of the process and also the questions, because uh, I think that's the, that's the key thing. And for me, it's a lot in terms of the, the third part for me is, is around the output. Uh, like maybe the way you said, for example, building a theory uh, around around this, as you gave the example of Einstein. And I think it's really about the output is that at the end of it, have you sort of in a very significant way almost created a new way of doing something yeah mm -hmm. because as a critical thinker you really question yeah you question a lot that's why it's a lot of it's about question because it's almost like saying you don't see barriers yeah because a lot of times there's process like now the question about the child custody i'm sure there is clear laws around how this and that should be done or the co-parenting but i think for you as a, as a mediator is it's almost like pushing the, the, the pushing the boundary yeah and asking critical questions, not just being content. Because now, again, with all the examples you're looking at, we're looking at real life situations. Yeah? And life is not cast in stone. Two lives are not the same. So it's, it's a question of really seeing how do we critically ask, ask the very critical questions and how do we ensure that we are changing the way things are done. So I think for you as a critical thinker is almost trying to say, you're not just pushing papers, yeah? Not, let's say for example, saying I need to, or meeting targets, yeah? It's going beyond that because you'll find the most, some of the most successful people are very critical thinkers. By, by, by being critical thinker, it means that uh, they're not just content with the way things are, but they're almost asking like, the next time I'm doing this, how is it going to be better? Yeah, how is it keep improving? How will it continue improving? So it might actually be difficult for you to build a theory, but it's almost like saying, how am I, 
in my next child custody case, how has it gotten better? There have been some learnings from the last one. Maybe there's some things that didn't go as well, didn't go as fast. So how can I actually get it better? Uh, how can it get it better? And I think that's the same case with all, I can see a number of the others that have been put up, like devolution, uh, what is this other one? Uh, about justice, uh, disputes. And I think it's principally a lot about that. Look into the process, uh, understand understand the process a, a lot better. And if I can take you back is the first, the, I think for me, the first very crucial, crucial step in every situation is the analysis. Because now if you don't have a very good analysis of the situation, then whatever else you do for that is likely to be flawed, yeah? And also you need to be open in terms of sometimes you might go down the steps and find that you didn't do a very good analysis or some new information comes in. So you should be happy to go back. So really, I think for me, at the very crucial stage is really understanding the situation. I think sometimes most of us are wired towards solving issues. Yeah, that's why sometimes you find that uh, in, let's say in a classroom uh, or let's say you're, you're in a setup where you're asking a question, you find people have already lifted up their hands even before you finish asking your question. Yeah. So we find that a lot of times we are wired to solve problems. Yeah. And I think that's why as critical thinkers, we need to step back a little bit. And yes, we need to get to the resolution of the issue, but we need to critically analyze it, analyze the situation. So it's almost like going back to you're, you're looking at a more sustainable way of resolving issues or dissolving disputes because if you don't find more sustainable ways of doing it we'll keep resolving issues forever and we'll not be doing it any better we'll probably just be doing the same way we've been doing it so i think for me it's really going back to the first steps i think it's that thing i've been told go back to the basics yeah go back to the basics most of the time we're trying to work at the end of it we are wired to let's solve this issue let's solve as many issues but i think let's take a bit more time to analyze the situation and then it it cuts across with all the, the rest as i can see on the list thank you Okay, yeah. Uh, yes. Uh, uh, thank. Yeah. Thank you for. Thank you for. Uh, thank you for uh, for that particular contribution. And I know we are getting into the uh, the actual closing. And uh, with that, then uh, I I would like to be able to just uh, read through uh, quite quickly. We uh, and I'll just read through in terms of uh, what the others uh, the other the other uh, the other. Uh, topics that uh, are there, and you can be able to also just uh, give in your your insight on them. Uh, so we have uh, fellow, uh, the topic on critical uh, awareness of mediation, uh, critical awareness of mediation, uh, and uh, uh, in Kenya, and that is a topic that is being uh, handled by Pascal Yamangi, and uh, we have Mini 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 Mangeli on mediation and devolution in Kenya, a case of mediation centers uh, in all in all the counties, and uh, we we have um, uh, media, the uh, fellow uh, mediator. Philomena Chege and her topic is on resolving disputes in Chama's community development groups through mediation. Um, something that's quite unique as uh, we, we do go on is just the very localized context of, of this. I don't know what you, your comment can be because you know like now Chama's actually like associated with, with Kenya. What value will this add to either the global or even just the national you know, conversations around the development of uh, Chama's or investment groups? when uh, we have a mediator like who's focusing on such a topic and it's dispute resolution. Thank you. It, 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 does, it does add a lot of value because one, uh, in a way, especially looking for at very unique examples uh, is that uh, we are bringing something to the world uh, that, that yes, it, has, it exists as well in other, in other parts of the world, maybe in a different way. Maybe, maybe it's not as has not pervaded their societies as it has in Kenya. So you find that uh, then we are contributing a lot to the world knowledge and the better we are at doing it, for example, resolving conflicts when it comes to examples of chamas, because chamas are quite dynamic. Yes, part of the at attribute of chama is the financial, but also the social part of it is a very important, it's a very important aspect. And sometimes probably it's a social that brought in the, you now the financial aspect of it of, of, or, vi or vice versa. So you find that in such a case then, uh, it really helps for us that even now as we engage, because now one of the things I'll look at it from a Chama perspective is that as we engage into setting up a Chama, uh, 
we need to be very critical in terms of how, what are the goals you have for the chama? Because now you find that there's that mix of personal relationships and financial and financial matters. And you know that it's a very dicey situation because maybe we got into the chama when we were dating yeah? and both of us are in the same chama. But then along the way we break up yeah, or something happens, yeah, our relationship doesn't work. What does that mean? Does it mean that now the, the chama was based, on, was based on the relationship or not? So it means that when it comes to the whole idea about being really thinking things critically, it's it's a it's a it's a daily affair. So it's a, and there's always dynamics and factors that come into play that that can actually affect how how we how we do it, or how do we how do we divorce? Let's say the the whole aspect of maybe personal issues. Yeah, I could be going through a personal issue, and for some reason I don't feel like attending the chama meeting. Uh, should I expect the rest of the people just to understand? Because today, well, I don't feel like it because of one or this the other reason. So it's it's those things of really being able to understand. Uh, how do we as individuals and groups collectively think through things very critically? Yeah. And also in terms of how, how are we demonstrating the knowledge you're gaining to others? Because now also for you as a mediator, as you're going through the mediation process, a lot of knowledge and insights you're gaining. And maybe this is a part whereby you need to look for forums for you to share this knowledge or even through writing or maybe social media, looking at opportunities for you to be able to share these insights. Because I think one of the big challenges we have, and even that's why sometimes some of, uh, when you look at the ranking or globally of academic institutions, it's a big chunk of it is around research yeah, and knowledge coming out of these institutions. And I think some of it, we don't have to, it doesn't have to be that complex. It can be as simple as you, like now these topics, it's really amazing because there's a lot of wealth of knowledge that is going to be put out us finding forums whereby we can be able to publish this, we can be able to have these speakers talk about it or be quoted uh, in terms of what they're share in terms of what they're sharing. So I think I see this being a very critical aspect in terms of us building a body of knowledge, not just for us, but really building a body of knowledge and credibility of us as individuals and as a nation as being intellectuals in such a way that somebody can go back and say, yes, there's this topic somebody was talking about investments group, and we know Kenya is really foundational, and I can be able to reach out to this individual in Kenya because I've seen their people need. I've seen them talk. Uh, they're really an expert on it. I can invite them or I can quote them in what I'm doing. Yes, thank you. Back to you. Okay. Yeah, uh, that, yeah yes, thank, uh, thank you very much for that, for that particular insight. And especially the, the aspect that you've talked about uh, with the, the journey as, as, as an authority in a, either in a certain field or in a certain context. And those are the openings that now uh, provide an opportunity even for invitation into, um, uh, into forums that are, are, are going on, because they are, especially now that we are uh, digital or we are virtual, there are very many forums that are going on. And it, it would be very exciting for us to be able to have, you know, people who are speaking in these particular forums who are coming from um, our regions and we are giving the world the perspective um, from, from, from ourselves. So I'll just read through the others and you can give a combined um, a comment uh, on, on them. Uh, yes, we've talked about on the chamas and we also have uh, um, uh, the, uh, from Kari Kanampio, sensitization of the public and court users on Mara of Tarakanithi County in Kenya. Uh, then and, and here her focus is on police chiefs and area leaders and, and lawyers. Uh, then we have uh, a topic by Asiya Kamukama on mediation in the workplace for startups, transforming team leaders into conflict ninjas, the untapped income opportunity for mediators. Uh, we have uh, the topic by Sela Ruto on uh, integration of professional mediators in the chief's office in Capsaton location of Nandi County in Kenya. And uh, 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 the next other topic that we have is from Pauline Wamboi on employee, employee, employer mediation in the banking sector. I'll, um, allow me to probably just uh, the, the ones that I've mentioned earlier, because you notice that they are very, very localized. And I believe also the, even the very last one that we have, which is um, um, a, a proposal for a media, proposal for mediation office uh, in, um, in, 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 a, in a county in Kenya. And uh, this is uh, Christine uh, Kakema and her uh, proposal is uh, on opening a mediation office in Tarakanithi um, County in Kenya. I mean, is there anyone who wants to hear about Tarakanithi? Is there anyone who's interested in Kaprastone? Is there anyone who's interested in, you know, in Kakamega? Is there anyone who's interested in, you know, Bungoma? Is there 
I mean, really, yeah, what could you say about that? And especially coming as an educator yourself. Thank you. I think the, I think people are interested and I think it's not so much maybe about hearing about the location, but it's hearing about what is coming out of there. And I think that's where by now the quality of the output comes in. Yeah, I think it's not so much about the quantity, but a big part is about the, the quality. And here by quality, what I mean is that, uh, are you bringing something new? Is anything new that is coming out from what you're doing? Like now, for example, if it's the, the example you have of uh, opening up an office in Tarakaniti for mediation, uh, what what new what new maybe body of knowledge or what new approaches are we going to get? Because now I'm I'm trying to think if you have to get a very unique way of doing mediation that is comes out of Tarakaniti, either due to the uniqueness of the place or maybe the unique approach or even the, the situations that are being handled there, then the world will want to hear because we know there is huge challenges. Let's say, for example, if you come up with a unique way of uh, being sustainable as a mediator, the whole aspect about uh, mediators being able to build income, sustainable income, then the rest of the country will want to know. All the mediators will want to know. And same thing across the world. There are very few places where there are mediate, very sustainable mediation practices. So that could be something that would be amazing to learn. Or there could be something very unique about Tarakaniti. Uh, maybe you, you borrow some cultural approaches towards solving conflicts uh, in Tarakaniti and put them in, put them uh, to make it become a mainstay of how you do it and have a very unique formula or source towards uh, your, your conflict resolution. Uh, or mediation, then it's something that the world would want to hear. So I think for, for me, and here this is where I bring back the whole aspect about critical thinking and the critical thinking process. It's really for us to, to go deep into these particular issues. I almost want to say that uh, if you're taking on this practice, uh, not just for the Taraganiti, but if you're taking on these particular issues that have been put across as the questions, it's almost like you want to build, you're, you're working on a PhD on that. It's whereby you almost get into an identify sort of like a niche and really deep dive and really be critical about it. And that's whereby the critical thinking really comes in because we are looking at how do we come up with a totally new way of looking at it or doing it. And that comes from doing a lot of analysis, inferring, going back and forth, evaluating really. So I think it's really putting a lot of your skin into the game. So I think for me, it's uh, for you to say you're really being successful at what you're doing and leveraging on critical thinking, it means that you're really open to doing a lot of work. It's a lot of work. That's one thing I have to tell you. For you to be a critical thinker, it's a lot of work because you have a lot of back and forth. You almost have to think about yourself as a, as a scientist. Somebody is doing some studies. You're trying to get a vaccine for COVID. Yeah, I'm sure the back and forth. Or the, what is it called? The, the example you give about uh, Edison and the light bulb, yeah? over a thousand times or 10,000, depending on the example you see. But at the end of the day, coming up with a, a very unique thing that is almost like a one in the world. Yeah, so I think that's the whole idea about why the critical thinking, uh, question about being a critical thinker comes in. And I will say that cuts across all the various areas. It's almost like saying, if it's all aspect about banking, solving of issues about banking, maybe it's around uh, non-performing loans. What is that very unique way that you're going to bring on board into the industry? Yeah, and how have you gone? How have you gone about bringing that way of resolving complex to an extent whereby the banks will now, instead of them, uh, let's say, sending auctioneers to to clients, or sending threatening emails or letters or sending you to court, will actually think that say, yeah. Uh, hello, Alex. Can you hear me clearly? Hello, Alex. 
Uh, can you hear me clearly? Hello? Uh, can you hear me clearly, Alex? Okay, uh, fellows, uh, we will uh, go through. We'll uh, go through the the, uh, the the other the other several the other topics that have come in for us, uh, so that we can be able to. Um, yes, uh, Alex, welcome back. Uh, you may kindly you may kindly just uh, repeat your very last uh, comments that you were giving, as you were giving the. Let me let me let, let me allow me to kindly read the 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 the. the, the the, the proposal that we have for banking, but um, I know you are giving your insights uh, from uh, uh, well, just uh, generally on, on what uh, can be the, 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 the situation uh, or uh, if someone is, is, is writing on banking. Um, so we have uh, on banking, we have uh, Pauline Mwamboi, employer, employee, employer mediation in the banking sector and specifically um, her angle is on banking fraud and how employees are handled in that in, in that particular situation you were giving your comments generally on uh, uh, for example an example of banking yes please alex uh, yeah you may kindly uh, be able to unmute now alex yes thank you yeah so i think for me it's a, it's a lot in terms of uh, even when it comes to baby banking fraud by staff it's a lot about really trying to analyze the situation and understand why. Because I, I know a lot of times the assumption is that uh, maybe it's out of greed, uh, it's sort of having the opportunity, but I think it helps It helps a lot. And for us as mediators, what gives us value is if you're bringing something new, yeah, a very new way of uh, things being done, or even a new way to mitigate against that situation happening, because that's when you become of value. Uh, because if we go in and just look at it from the same perspective as it's been done from day day in, day out, then there's really inherently no value we've added. But if you'll be able to take more time to be, let's say, even go through the critical thinking process, uh, then we're able to really come up with a, with a solution that is out of this world. And the beauty about following the process is that you find as you go through the process, you're not the one who has the answers as a mediator. Okay. And I think that that's a very, that's a very uh, valuable, uh, that's a very valuable uh, 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 con contribution uh, from, from Alex that uh, we are not necessarily the uh, 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 as as his connectivity as as our connectivity gets better, uh, because we are not yet able to hear him very well. So it's a very uh, good contribution that um, Alex. Alex, can you hear me well? Uh, yes, please, Alex. You were talking about the relevance. Yes, please. Yeah, no, no, I think for I think the main thing I was just driving at, and as maybe as a last comment, is that uh, for mediation, I see mediation and, and uh, critical thinking being very going very hand in hand. And for me, I see any mediator being a critical thinker. So it's for you, yes, you maybe are already into mediation and you probably are very good at it. And what I think is that you need to build the two of them. Uh, together. So in terms of if, if you feel that you need to adopt more critical thinking approaches, because now it's really a lot about, mediation is a lot about asking questions, interrogating the situation, and being able to try and find a solution to things. And it's critical thinking that really enables you to be better at, at it. Uh, so, so for me, even the examples given for banking will be the same in terms of really, first of all, getting down into the depth of the issue. Yeah. And the process helps you get there. And as I said, it's really not for you to find the solution, but it's for you to almost to say, to say that incubate it. Yeah, by incubate means ask the right of several questions, get the right set of people to, to engage with, bring them on the table, and be able to really find a sustainable way of addressing that particular issue or challenge that has been faced. Okay. I, um, I, I think I think you've added a very important thing that normally is for mediator in two aspects: ask the right questions and then also bring the right people. If we may reflect on our session with um, our, our uh, fellowship director, 
uh, uh, Reverend Professor Peter Gishure in his um, conflict coaching session. He actually said that part of the reason why conflict transformation is the way to go when it comes as even mediators is that it allows for you to bring in people who are normally excluded and it also allows you to bring in aspects or elements which would normally not be um, in, involved or would not even be allowed, let's say, for example, like if it's in a mediation or in, 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 in any of the other and, or, or in another area that's uh, that, that another approach that's that that let's say like that's used. Um, so just a, a quickly running through uh, the other topics that are there and also we have a comment uh, that in critical thinking uh, where we could have facts and truths which are at times different. Uh, which do we use? Do we use, we use truth or facts? And that we will um, we'll have you as part of your closing remarks on that. But uh, the other topics we have is Phyllis Wangwe, the place of mediation in access to justice, a Kenyan perspective. Yet back again to probably what we had talked about earlier. Is there anyone out there interested uh, to know? And what you actually emphasize on is, can you bring out what is that Kenyan perspective? What is that Phyllis Wangwe theory of on the place of mediation in access to justice in Kenya that either no one else has contributed or they, if they have contributed, what value uh, are you building onto that? That's what um, we've heard from you. Then uh, Felista uh, Marura, um, uh, PhD, her topic is uh, why, emo why emotions matter in mediation, the emotional side of conflict resolution. I, um, um, and, and that's also a, a very different angle of looking at mediation. Isaiah Kiplagat Melli on infusing mediation in conflict resolution between TSC and NAT for successful uh, acquisition of quality education in Kenya, Kenyan primary schools. And uh, we also looked at um, uh, the aspect of, uh, the aspect of uh, opening the mediation office. So the comment on the relationship between children as they grow into adolescence starts changing very quickly as the children want to be treated as grown-ups, as grown, while at the same time, the guardian or the parents taking care of them in all ways are meeting their financial needs. I think that is now from Margaret Gidaya, who's uh, looking at the topic on, uh, uh, on, 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 on parents and, and, and children in terms of what is the angle that she has. I think it can be put through the test in terms of, I mean, is, is that the highest level of critical thinking? What else can be built on it? I think that is just really the, 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 the challenge uh, that I think we give uh, to, to fellows and also we give to ourselves uh, as, as, as we do advance on. But it is great that we've been able to have this session because it's allowed us to comb, to comb ourselves in terms of you know what other ways can we be able to, to handle this. So uh, we'll come now on to you, uh, uh, to our facilitator, um, Alex Nyinge, with, uh, great, with deep gratitude. Uh, uh, and uh, 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 just have your comments uh, uh, before we can get into our closing with the words of the national anthem. Thank you. And for fellows, please remember to post your uh, your details on the chat for your registration for the session. Welcome, Alex. Thank you. All right. Uh, thanks, thanks, Mangare, and thanks everyone for holding forth uh, this long. And I think for me, one of the things about being a medi mediator, <clears throat> and I will add a mediator who is a critical thinker, is when it comes to the question of fact and truth. I think that's the, now that's where your role really comes in comes into play because now as a mediator it's almost like uh, for you you're not looking in terms of how that how do you at the end of the day say this person was right or this person was wrong yeah so it's sort of like you have a very tricky and challenging uh, role to play yeah because it would be easy sometimes to be presented with facts and say based on the facts this is this is what the I don't know how to say this is what the truth is or this is what the situation is. So it's really for you to find uh, as, for you to be able to play this in such a way that uh, you leaving everybody being satisfied with the situation. So this is where by now the critical questions you're able to ask, the critical processes you bring into place, the crucial people you make sure that are part of the process in such a way that at the end of it. Uh, everybody comes out of it happy. We might not have gotten what we wanted, but you actually come out of the situation feeling that uh, it was worth us going through this particular process. And also you're building credibility into the whole aspect of mediation. 
because now if you find ourselves in a situation whereby more and more people are feeling dissatisfied with mediation, they start saying, well, why do we have this thing called mediation? Yeah, let's just go our old way or whether let's fight it out or let's go to court or let me be dissatisfied and why every other day. So I think it's really for you now as a mediator to, to, to see how do you ensure you're building more credibility to the, to the, to the profession and also you're being able to leverage now your expertise to, to enable the, the disputants be happy about it. And also there's other part about emotions. Yes, uh, I think that's, we can't disregard because now, even for the example you're looking at, we are looking at real life examples. We are not looking at hypothetical examples like the one I gave about the aliens, yeah? Uh, but we're really looking at an example that uh, it's something that can either has happened to any of us or we can almost be pinpoint, yeah? It can almost be point that to say, yes, I know of somebody maybe who's pregnant uh, as a teenager. I know of somebody who, I know of a teacher who's a member of TSC. I know of somebody who's a banker or has been affected by banking fraud. I know of somebody who's trying to set up a practice, trying to set up a business or trying to set up a... a, 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 a. So those are real, real life examples that happen to us every day as Kenyans, uh, the things that happen to us. So the element of emotions, I may not have a very concrete answer to it, but it's, it's a fact that is there. The question is, uh, and, that, and I think that's part of the reason why we are, we are really advocating for, uh, we are advocating for mediation because now we are talking about from a point of view of saying, we trying to find a balance, a balance, yeah. So it's not about a winner takes it all, yeah. Uh, but it's a situation whereby everybody is a winner, yeah. That's a cliche term, but I think that's really essentially what you're looking at, whereby everybody comes out of it feeling yes, uh, the right thing was done for me and it was fair and it's the right thing to, uh, to be done. So the emotions are not divorced, but I think that's now whereby the richness of mediation comes in because it doesn't even know emotions, but then it doesn't allow emotions to, to influence it. It really look, it, it builds on the process to ensure that it's really fair and it's really just, and not just a fair and just from a legal perspective, but fair and just from a point of view whereby it's, because sometimes a lot of situations we are dealing with are emotive. Yeah, it's leaving the example I said, it's spouses uh, fighting over something. It's very emotive. It's an issue of an employer and an employee disagreeing or something. It's very emotive. The situation is quite, it's quite emotive. So it's really a lot for us as, 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 uh, as mediators, not to say we are not, we are not uh, uh, recognized the emotions, but also we, we are working in such a way that we consider that everybody is equal and it's only fair that we do what is right and just for everyone. So I think that's that would be what I'll say as my closing comment, Wangari. Okay, Asante Sana, and uh, with uh, deep gratitude, please receive appreciation from uh, all from um, all of us um, in this in this session, and also from uh, all the other colleagues. Uh, who will be uh, able to, who will be joining us um, in, uh, who, who will be able to uh, share in this uh, particular, this, uh, this particular uh, recording. And uh, we really just believe that it has really made us comb ourselves and, um, and the topics that we have because, and uh, just to also mention that uh, already uh, fellows uh, received, an uh, received an invitation to submit proposals to an international conference that is being run by mediators in Canada and uh, in, in, in America. And th that really is just the door that we are uh, seeing as opening. And we encourage fellows make use of this fellowship as the opportunity to just uh, get yourself grounded in this particular work because we have great support uh, with uh, our, the, our partners, uh, our, fellowship, our fellowship guide and uh, this particular program and uh, that's Reverend Dr. Uh, Peter Mbaro from the Catholic University of Eastern Africa. He's the director for Cent the Center for Social Justice and Ethics. And uh, uh, at the matriculation weekend, he expressed his deep um, uh, support towards enabling us to even go to the level of being able to develop journal a journal uh, and just guiding us in that particular process. And it, this is the great opportunity for us to really just tap into such uh, opportunities. We have Dr. Sharon Sutherland, who's the director at uh, Mediate BC. And, uh, uh, she has been a, a law professor, and at the same time, she is also a director of a very one of our one, one, uh, one of very active 
uh, mediation uh, society and body in, in, uh, in Canada. And so she has a lot of experience and also a lot of grounding on understanding um, how mediation works in local, what they, for them they call indigenous, uh, for indigenous communities. Uh, at the same time, we have a great pool of coaches from wellness, um, arbitration, critical thinking, practice development, and uh, on ODR, and really let us just tap into these uh, colleagues and who are with us, whether it's in aspects of media, let's tap into the knowledge that we do receive. But most of all, it's the opportunity for us to be able to uh, in this in, in this work. And with that, then uh, we come to the closing of our session today. And uh, we will be closing with the words of our national anthem uh, in English. Uh, and I will lead, O God of all creation, O God of all creation, lest this our land and nation, justice be our shield and defender. May we dwell in unity, peace and liberty, plenty be found within our borders. It has been our session today and on the, on the fourth day of September. And our session today is part of the Foundations in Conflict Transformation and specifically the five months fellowship national certificate for mediators in Kenya, a virtual personal development uh, course that is running for five months from July to November. Today has been a fellowship mentorship session and it is part of the Women's Edge, which is a skills mentorship um, hour that we run. And our topic today has been on critical thinking skills with our uh, fellowship session mentor, Alex Ninge, uh, who is uh, in the area of global business and sustainability. And uh, we do thank you, Alex, uh, yeah, Alex Ninge, MBA, uh, for uh, this particular session. And colleagues and friends, please have a good the rest of the morning. Uh, for those who will be joining us in the Hangout, we have a Hangout at 10 a.m. today just to find out how are you. So Alex, asante sana, na mungu wa kubariki sana. Thank you, God yeah, bless you. Yeah. Thank you as well for the opportunity. Have a lovely day, all of you. It shall be. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.